Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Storm coming at you from Team Shadow Strike, and I have another deck profile for you. And yes, it's another Kagero deck profile. Um, and I actually still have one more to film after this one. So anyway, guys, this deck profile is bringing back an old, an old guy from the past, but because of the support we got in booster set one or um what Van, card fight vanguard g booster volume one g, um, generation stride this guy is now back in the mix and this is going to be an updated version of my um dauntless reverse deck um this deck guys i'm sorry i don't know why this deck got so much hate when set 14 was released he was called the weakling he was called terrible i don't know why this card i mean you know even some people in my locals who will remain nameless said this deck was going to be terrible and when i slapped it together i won four straight like three straight weeks with it i mean this deck is insane um it, when played properly and i don't think it doesn't get the respect it deserves but now it comes back with more support and it's actually really insane and i will be showing you a couple of things at the end of the video of why so anyway let's get straight into this deck profile so another reason this deck became good was because of the new strides that we do have access to which is very very awesome one more time shout out to my good friend ryan for getting me these sexy ass silver sleeves because bushiro decided to fuck us over and not give us the silverbacks like they did in japan if you guys haven't figured it out by now, I'm pissed at that. Pissed the fuck off. So for the starter of the deck, I am still using the uh, the starter I was using in my old Dauntless Reverse deck, which is Red Pulse Draco Kid, to search the top five cards of the deck for a grade three. Nothing else to say there. So for the triggers, we play four copies of the Magnum Shot Draco Kid and two copies of Blu-ray Draco Kid for only six critical triggers. Um, then for the rest, we play three copies of Seal Dragon Arctopeak. And for the first time ever... Let me raise my camera up a little bit there, guys. I am playing a card I have not played in... I have never, I'm playing a type of trigger I don't think I've ever put in a Kagro deck that I've ever shown you, and that is Stand Triggers. And then I'm playing three Lizard Soldier Vera. So, um, Artipik is the Margo clone. I don't think I said that. But, okay, Vera, his ability is um, Generation Break 1. When your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone due to an effect from one of your cards, choose one of your other units, and you may have that unit get plus 10,000 until the end of turn. If you do return this unit to your deck, shuffle your deck, this ability cannot be used for the rest of the turn. Um, that is just too good of a card not to play, guys. Um, I found a way to make this work. I have playtested this deck, and this deck works absolutely amazing. Um, I will say, you know, this deck shines in the late game, guys. It will literally catch your opponent off guard so bad, and I'm going to, like I said, we will, I will show you. Next, my four beautiful heal triggers. So, six crit, three stand, four heal triggers. Grade ones. Four copies of Dragon Dancer Maria. Now, these would be protect orbs, but I only have one play set of protect, orb, protect orbs, and those are in my cross deck or the X. Um, so... If I do get more Protect Orbs, um, that's where these will go. Um, but anyway, um, simple, perfect guard. No Quintet Wall. Um, four copies of Dragon Monk Girokiru. It is a Generation Break 1 unit. Um, its ability is when your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone due to an effect from one of your cards, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. Just bear with me, guys. You will be. You will start. This will start to all make sense very shortly. Next, I play two copies of Energy Flame Athonic. His ability is: is whenever he's on the rear guard and you retire one of your opponent's units, you may shove him in the soul and unflip two damage. Next, we play two Lava Flow Dragon. I do not play Blade Master in this deck, but it does give you an easy access to stride just for the simple discard, um, because we do need to stride at least once to get our ultimate skill off so if we discard this from our hand it is treated as a grade three and then finally we play two calamity tower wyvern i don't really know if this is a necessary card for the deck so you could swap this out with something else if you wanted to but it does give us a little more draw power 
since we only play three draw triggers, so I think it is necessary. But that's just my opinion. So. Next for grade twos, we play four copies of Twilight Arrow Dragon. And I happen to pick up one SP of him. So his ability, he's also another generation break unit, generation break one. Um, when this unit attacks a vanguard, and if this unit is boosted, you may counterblast one. If you do, choose one of your opponent's grade two or less rear guards and retire it. So it gives it's a new version of Berserk Dragon. You just have to have strode at least once. So pretty good card. And next we play four copies of Dominate Drive Dragon. This is our Dauntless 12k attacker, so that's a no-brainer. And then we play three copies of Dragon Knight Tenaz. So his ability is, he's an, also a Generation Break 1 unit. His ability is when your opponent's rearguard is put into the drop zone due to an effect from one of your cards, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. Again, guys, got the idea figured out yet? If not, just bear with me. Then for the Grade 3s, four Dauntless Drive Dragons. One of the best break rides from the break ride format. Still very usable. Um... Um, ability is is when um, a Kagura is limit break. When uh, well, actually, let me back up here for a second. You guys might have noticed in my grade one lineup, I do not play any of the limit erasers. The reason is is you don't really necessarily need them. You can use stride until you are ready to break ride. Um, so limit break when a Kagura rides on top of this unit, it gains plus ten thousand power and a new skill. The skill is is when this unit attacks. At the end of that turn, and I, I don't, yeah, when this unit attacks at the end, okay, I'm just gonna read this. <laughs> um, when a Kagura rides this unit, choose your Vanguard until the end of the turn. That unit gets plus 10k, and the skill of at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, if this unit has not stood during that turn, you may pay the cost if you do stand this unit. So essentially, um, you just break ride, attack. Ditch three, stand back up. And also its second ability is um, when this unit attacks, if the number of rear guards you have is more than your opponent's, he gains plus 2k, making him a 13k attacker, which is very handy. And then for the, the boss monster this deck, we play four copies of Dauntless Dominate Dragon Reverse. I have two SPs, too. His ability is... Um, Counterblast one and choose one of your Kagura rear guards and lock it. Until the end of that turn, this that unit this unit gets the, the skill of when this unit's drive check reveals a grade one or greater Kagura, choose one of your opponent's grade one or less rear guards and retire it. And this unit gets plus three k until the end of turn. And then if you have a copy of Dauntless in your soul, it becomes a thirteen k body, which means cross break ride and cross ride. So it makes it um, your opponent will have to worry about guarding it. Um, um, getting hitting bigger numbers to hit it. So um, let me show you now the stride deck real quick, which it is the same for my cross and perditions, which is four root flare dragon. Um, his ability is stride. You may um, you may flip over one copy of him and retire a whole column, but you have to have strode at least once. Um, so that's why I play two copies of Divine Dragon Mahmud. This is the card you want to stride into first. So you can go stride, stride, persona flip, skill activates. And then we play two, Atmos. Simple, stride, when it attacks, counterblast one, gain 10k. So now let me show you what I mean. Let's say our field looks something like this. Um, Okay. Let's say our field looks like this. We're at four damage. Um, and we go cross break ride. Where's one of the SPs? 
Okay. Lock. Twenty-three. Now here's what happens. Your opponent is getting ready to be attacked by Dauntless Reverse. Where if I reveal a grade one or higher unit or something that is simply not a trigger, I gain three thousand power and I get to destroy one of your opponent's grade one or less rear guards. Let's say I reveal this. Okay? Grade one, not a trigger. I destroy one of your grade one units. It's destroyed. If I've strode at least once in the game, which I will have by that point, plus three, plus five, plus five, plus five. Second check, another grade one. Destroy another grade one or rear guard, grade one or lower below her if it's possible. Plus five, plus five, plus five. Discard three, stand back up. So in essential, if I don't trigger and I hit two cards that aren't triggers and I destroy two units, plus 10k, plus 10k, plus 10k, plus 6k. And then say I go attack with this. So this would be 9 plus 16, so 25 at the Vanguard. Counterblast 1, destroy a grade 2 because he destroys grade 1 and belows, plus 5k, plus 5k. And then I attack, I get another trigger, and say for some weird reason they have another grade 1, plus 5k, plus 5k. So in essentially, this both of these cards now have gotten huge boosts, you know, and together, this column right here, it's only 14, but if I've destroyed one unit, then it becomes 24, 2, 34. So this guy gets huge quick. You basically just take 14 and add 10 to it each time you destroy one unit. Because keep in mind, both of these cards do not say main phase only. So these two cards are basically crack for Dauntless. If you can somehow combo in one of these stand triggers to give 10,000 power somewhere, that's even better. You can even access these unit skills with Root Flare by retiring one whole column, plus 10k, plus 10k, plus 10k. And then using this, plus 5, plus 5. So, <laughs> so guys, um, that's what um, I wanted to show you with this deck. You know, some people, you know, they, they tend to think when the new stuff comes out that the old stuff just becomes irrelevant. Um... And that's actually a pretty, um, it's, it's not the truth. It's, um, and essentially, you don't need the stand trigger. And I might eventually take the stand trigger out. In fact, I think I'm, um, I think I might end up doing that anyway. But essentially, these two cards right here have made Dauntless playable again. I think this could actually be considered an underdog deck. Um... Like I said, this deck shines in the late game. You have to at least stride once to get both of their abilities. So in the early game, you can just simply stride into Mahmud, get that one stride, so all your generation break cards are active. So, <laughs> so anyway, guys. <clears throat> In the comment section below, tell me what you think about my new Dauntless Reverse deck. It is absolutely amazing. I love this deck to pieces. Um, it is so fun to play. I think it is um, an under an underrated, appreciated deck. Um, I think this deck could actually be um, a dark horse, you know. So, in the comment section below, tell me what your thoughts are on this deck. Tell me what you uh, if you have any questions. Make sure you leave all feedback below, and I will. Um, always answer your questions and I always love reading your feedback. Please leave me some feedback guys. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up this video for me and I will see you next time.